the sun. It's a ball of gas a million miles in diameter. It weighs two times 10 to the 30th kilograms. That's 300,000 times more than the Earth weighs. Imagine the gravity of that object. And think about the inner core of the sun, the innermost 10%. What must the pressures in there be with half a million miles of hydrogen above it being hauled down by that incredible gravitational field? And what must the temperatures in there be like having been compressed and compressed by all that weight? Indeed, the temperatures are as high as 14 million degrees Kelvin. That's more than enough to rip the electrons off the hydrogen atoms and expose the protons at their centers. Those protons are all positively charged. They repel each other like these magnets do. And the force of that repulsion is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Uh, every time I cut the distance in half, the force quadruples. So any protons that are on a collision course are likely to veer away from each other, keeping their distance. It turns out there's another force. It's called the strong nuclear force, and it's powerfully attractive. It's what binds protons together into nuclei. It can be a hundred times more powerful than the force that's trying to repel them. Unfortunately, this force has a distance limitation. If the two protons don't get to within 10 to the minus 13th centimeter of each other, they can't feel the strong nuclear force, and so the electrostatic repulsion wins. However, if two protons can be coaxed to get within 10 to the minus 13th centimeter of each other, then they will race together, ferociously attracting each other, fusing into helium with such enthusiasm that a tremendous amount of energy is released. This process is known as fusion. The problem is, to get these two protons close enough to fuse, we've got to overcome this huge repulsive force. Remember that the repulsion is inversely proportional to the distance between them squared. So in order to bring them to within 10 to the minus 13th centimeter of each other, we've got to overcome a repulsion that's 10 to the 26th somethings. And it doesn't much matter what those somethings are when there are 10 to the 26th of them. The force is actually about one two millionth of a Newton, or roughly the weight of a gnat. But in the core of the sun, the temperatures are so high that all those protons are moving at 600 kilometers per second. And the pressure is so high that the density is 150 times that of water. Those protons are always within a billionth of a centimeter of each other. And the net result of those extremes is that 4 million tons of hydrogen fuse into helium every second. Now that may seem like a lot, and it is, but there is enough hydrogen in the core of the sun to last for 12 billion years, and we've only used 6 billion so far, so we've still got time, no need to worry yet. The energy produced by this process keeps the temperatures and pressures in the core very high, so the core pushes back against the weight of all that hydrogen above it. The sun is in a constant state of dynamic equilibrium. It's like Atlas holding up the world, constantly pushing outwards, furiously burning fuel just to stay the same size. One day, six billion years from now, a huge nugget of helium will have accumulated in the core of the sun. And the temperatures on that nugget will grow and the pressures will increase until uh, but that's a story for another day.